Hi, I'm Terrence Parr, and I'm the creator of the Antler Parser Generator. This little video gives you a tour of my new book, The Definitive Antler 4 Reference Guide, and tells you a little bit about the all-new Antler 4. In the first part of the book, you'll install Antler, look at the big picture, and then take a quick tour of Antler 4's feature set. Antler is what we call a parser generator. From a formal language description called a grammar, it generates a language recognizer, which we usually break down into a lexer and a parser. A language recognizer's job is to take input characters, break them up into words or tokens, recognize the grammatical structure, and then produce an internal representation called a parse tree. Part 1 also describes Antler's internal data structures and data types, so that it's not a black box. Part 2 of the book is about designing your own grammars and building language applications based upon the generated parsers. First, you'll learn about the common language patterns, such as sequence and choice, and then see how to build simple grammars using Antler notation. For example, let's say we wanted to recognize simple properties files like this one. Here's an Antler grammar with three parsing rules and three lexer or tokenizing rules that would match those properties. Testing this properties grammar is easy. Just run Antler on the grammar file, compile the generated files, and use the test rig called grun to see how the recognizer tokenizes the properties file. The parse tree shows how the parser interpreted the input. Antler 4 is easy to use because it does a lot of work for you, such as automatically building those parse trees. But one of the coolest new features is the ability to specify expressions more naturally. Take a look at that expression rule, EXPR, and you'll see that it's left recursive, meaning that it immediately calls itself like a recursive function. Recursive descent parsers can't normally do this, but Antler automatically rewrites such rules to make them work. The parser even makes sure that the parse tree coincides with the grammar. After getting the basics, you'll learn how to look at a language description or an informal grammar, such as this one for JSON, and express that as an Antler grammar. Once you've got a good grip on grammars, it's time to learn how to build language applications. Antler can automatically generate tree listeners for you. A listener is just an object that responds to rule entry and exit events triggered by a parse tree walker as it discovers and finishes nodes. To support situations where an application has to control how a tree is walked, Antler parse trees also support the well-known tree visitor pattern. Part 3 is the advanced section of the book. In it, you'll learn about Antler's automatic error recovery, how to trigger actions during the parse itself instead of during a parse tree traversal after the fact, and how to control the parse itself with semantic predicates. The final chapter of Part 3 performs some lexical black magic. You'll see how to send different kinds of tokens to the parser on different channels, kind of like different radio signals. You'll also learn to deal with pathological languages that allow keywords as identifiers, so that if, if, then, call, call makes sense. Someone should seriously hunt those language designers down and speak harshly to them. And finally, you'll learn how to parse XML in all its glory so that you can truly amaze your family and friends. The last part of the book is the reference section and gives a summary of the runtime API, details left recursion elimination, and finally presents a big chapter that describes Antler syntax and functionality. Thanks for watching. This has been a Bonkers the Cat production.